Now, I'm going to go back to this industry poll that I had put out. Listen, take the polls and always let me know what you think. All right. So artificial intelligence crushed it. All right. Let's look at this. Artificial intelligence worldwide, the market size in the artificial intelligence market is projected to reach $184 billion in 2024. The market is expected to show an annual growth rate from 2024 to 2023 of 28.46%, resulting in the market volume of almost a trillion dollars by 2030. All right, so let's go to the cannabis worldwide. Now, obviously, artificial intelligence is going to be the bigger market. All right, some, some countries are just ahead of us <laughs> at this point. Um, Let's look at the revenue. Revenue in the cannabis market worldwide is forecasted to reach $64 billion. In 2024, the revenue is anticipated to demonstrate an annual growth rate of 3%, leading to a market volume of $75 billion by 2029. All right, so obviously not as big as AI. So I, I like I like doing these little, uh, these, uh, little polls just to sort of compare. But I want to get into... Um, <laughs> I, I did have fun making this page, by the way. I had to put Cheech and Chong in there. I want to get to some AI or uh, some cannabis companies because a lot of you have been reaching out to me and asking me, um, let's cover some cannabis stocks because I have done a lot with AI. So I'm like, all right, let's do some cannabis stocks. All right. Now, just recently, all right, a bill to decriminalize and to schedule cannabis to provide for reinvestment in certain persons adversely impacted by the war on drugs to provide an expungement of certain cannabis offenses and for other purposes. So, yeah, maybe this is going to be, you know, maybe it's going to be legal across the board. We'll see what happens. Uh, Justice Department formally moves to reclassify marijuana as a less dangerous drug in historic shift. All right. A proposed rule sent to the Federal Register recognizes the medical use of cannabis and acknowledges it has less potential for abuse than some of the nation's most dangerous drugs. You know, like the opioid epidemic that has been just crushing and killing people across the country. Something that we don't hear about every day. You know, people have surgery and then they have to getting addicted to these opioids and they're, they're handing them out like uh, Tic Tacs, you know. The Drug Enforcement Administration will take public comment on the proposal in a potentially lengthy process. If approved, the rule would move marijuana away from its current classification as a Schedule One drug alongside heroin and LSD. <laughs> Pot would instead be Schedule Three substance, a, a Schedule Three substance alongside ketamine, 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 oh my gosh, sorry, I can't speak, and some anabolic steroids. The move comes after a recommendation from the Federal Health and Human Services Department, which launched a review of the drug status at the urging of President Joe Biden. You know the thing. All right. So this is a very, very uh, exciting thing if you are a cannabis enthusiast. And so I think this is long overdue. And uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's crazy that it's not legal at this point, And it just draws more attention to it. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. Tell me what you think. Tell me in the chat. Should we just have a... Should it just be legal at this point? I mean, I don't personally don't think it should be, you know, in, in the same. Uh, it, it's not LSD. It's not crack cocaine. I mean, we have things being prescribed by doctors. And this is me giving my opinion. And whether you like it or not, you could disagree with me. That's fine. You know, we have things being prescribed that are literally killing people. And do you know how, how many medical malpractice lawsuits are? Do you know how many people die from medical malpractice? Look it up. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's crazy. So we're, we're wasting time, you know, talking about marijuana, you know. So let me know what you think about the the whole thing. You know the thing. Yeah, the thing. <laughs> the cannabis descheduling. All right, so let's talk about some stocks that I think are going to go on a tear if this comes to fruition. Now, what's nice here is this. We have the opportunity to take risk. We get to wear risk for whatever we are comfortable with. So I'm looking for stocks that are beat down. I'm looking at stocks that are cheap. And I'm looking at stocks that in the past couple of years have had attention drawn towards them for being cannabis companies. One big one, <clears throat> sorry, is INQD. All right, triple zero six five. Outstanding share count, 3.2 billion. Held at the DTC, 2.7. They have a 10,000 author or 10 sorry 10 billion authorized market cap of 2 million all right so think about that 
for me, knowing that this could possibly, and yes, it's an election year. Let's be real, guys. All right, it's an election year. And so I guarantee you the Dems definitely want, hey, what can we do at this point to garner some votes? You know, there it is, cannabis, student loan debt, all those catchy things that, you know, never get done, no matter what administration <laughs> there ever is. You know, they like to sling these terms around, you know, when it's election season. So, hey, if this happens, you're going to see these stocks soar, these cannabis companies. People are just going to, like, invest in them across the board. Give me them all. Give me all those shares. But they're sitting at triple zero six. Delinquent SEC reporting. Will this is like this is like this the uh, the show of yield, the show of delinquency because we've talked about a lot of delinquency today, a lot of yield signs. <laughs> Forgot to take that into consideration when I made that thumbnail, but yeah, they haven't had a PR since 2019. Now they have a really good CEO. I would love to have him on the show. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that, but I would love to have him on. You know, he's known to be a pioneer in the industry. So, but yeah, I mean, what's going to happen with INQD? Will it see an influx of buying if, you know, they legalize across the board? And let's be real, they're not going to legalize it across the board. I don't think. I don't know. Tell me what you think. You tell me what you think in the chat. I'm going to give you guys some espresso. The chart, I like it at six. You know, back in April, I mean, anything down here, it, yeah, he, he loves them. It's me, Brian. Love triple zero companies. Oh, you're going to, Brian, you're going to love one of my last stocks to talk about tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, I like INQD. Cannabis stock, boom, there's the first one. Next one, one of my favorites, BLEG. Rob, before we get into this one, why don't we play a couple uh, clips because... Dave Oswald was on the show. Let's 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 play it. Sure. Well, I mean, do you want to hear about the buyback? Or what do we what do we right. want to talk let's about? Let's start with the buyback first. Yeah. yeah. Let's All do right. That. You know, um, we've we've been seeing the same kind of stuff that everybody else has seen. We had we had a, a mystery market maker come in uh, over the last week or so and just kind of putting ridiculous asks up. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we we felt like this was probably the best way to deal with. Uh, that type of interference, you know what I mean? We, we want progress here and uh, we're going to do whatever it takes to get it. So, you know, we, we felt like that was the best, most, you know, proactive way to uh, get involved and handle that situation, you know, keep our structure tight and keep our, uh, our stock, you know, looking good to investors. I love this company. And I, I think that Dave Oswald is not screwing around. Absolutely. He's not screwing around. And yeah, here's the product. There it is. You know, I, I actually, uh, you know, asked him to send up some product and he did, you know, I did try it. I did try the, the sleep. It was excellent. They have the anxiety. Take the one on the road just in case. <laughs> but Oh, my gosh. All right. So let's talk about the share structure right here. And he talked about that. You know, buyback is huge. They want to combat the market makers. They want their stock to, to go up. Right now, they have an outstanding share count or authorized share of less than a billion. You know, 900 million outstanding share count of 774 uh, million and held at DTC about 600 million. So it's looking nice there. Pink current verified profile. Hey, no yield sign. No yield sign. Good job, Oswald and crew. Knock on wood. I don't want to cause any problems right now. Let's look at their latest PR. Brandon Legacy secures exclusive extraction partnership with one of the world's largest Kava distributors and producers. And so let's get to the gist of this part. All right. Under the terms of the agreement, Royal Biotech will produce hundreds of kilograms per week of nanized water-soluble 30% Kava extract for Botany Evolution. Is it Botany or Botany? It's Botany. Come on, dummy up, dummy up, Iraq, resulting <laughs> sorry, resulting in an approximate annual profit of eight hundred thousand dollars or more. Additionally, Royal Biotech will produce seventy percent of Cavalactone paste, which will conservatively yield conservatively yield an estimated profit of three hundred twenty five thousand annually. Combined, this collaboration is expected to generate a total annual profit of at least one point two five million. Leveraging the strengths of both companies to ensure the highest quality standards in kava extract production, 
I love this and I love what they're doing. They're not stopping. They, you know, and there, there are a couple micros and small caps that are absolutely um, going to compete with each other and it's going to be great. Um, but looking at the chart, you know, it hit, hit up there double zero six two. I like it. If it could sustain uh double zero two one, I'm looking at that as a nice buy-in. You know, it, 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 this is a crapshoot. Anything could happen because news trumps the chart, in my opinion. You have news, boom, chart creates its own. It, it's 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 new. It creates a new pattern, new path, you know. Um, but I do like it at double zero two one. That's just me, you know. <laughs> I like Lindsay's comment here. Jokes, trip zero equals straight bankrupt. <laughs> so I do like BLEG at these levels. Let's talk about another cannabis company that I'm really enjoying covering. I'm talking about RWGI sitting at a penny, a market cap of 2.5 million, authorized share count of 500 million, and outstanding share count of 215 million. All right, held at the DTC, 24 million. All right, that's nice. A lot of restricted shares here. This thing should be flying, especially if, like what I talked about earlier, if the legislation goes through, and like I said, it's just been introduced. It's still a long path, but this summer could be hot. All right? Let's look at their one of their latest PRs, just skimming through this thing. Road Dog announces 204% gains in revenues on quarterly disclosure ending in Mar on March 31st, 2024, end of first quarter. A 200% gain in revenue for the recent period first quarter um so let's take a look right here we are proud to announce that our team has achieved better than expected quarterly revenue gains as we have stated in previous press releases we firmly believe the company is now in its growth curve to continue our growth plan we have hired an experienced management team expanded our asset base of licenses and expanded it expanded our manufacturing capability we believe these expansions in our critical growth areas, place Road Dog in a predictable position to continue the hockey stick growth. And at the bottom, it says we are confident that our strategically planned roadmap of expansion via sales, acquisitions, and mergers has already increased 2024 revenues to meet and potentially exceed our stated goal of seven million annually. All right. That with the with if you look at the share structure, if you look at the numbers, this is great news. This is what I like to see in a company here too, a roadmap. And they address this roadmap, which is really cool. So you could see, well, here we are. We're in quarter two, complete the audit, monthly revenue reports, established 2.5 million USD, acquire dispensaries, expand cannabis, license portfolio. I love how companies, I mean, tell me in the, the chat, do you not like to see this? Maybe CEOs could, could hear you guys. Do you not like to see a roadmap laid out so clearly like this? I love when companies do this because then you can hold their feet to the firm and be like, hey, you said you're going to do this by quarter one. You said you're going to do this by quarter two. But I think these guys are obviously exceeding and doing a great job.